Hi there, this is uh, Robbie and I'm going to do a little video on how I preserve pine needles. So this is my first go at it, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I saw many videos instructing you to use glycerin. I'm using a 100 milliliter bottle because it was very expensive and hard to find. So hopefully that's gonna be enough for the little bit of pine needles that I have. So I've already started a bunch in my roaster and I'm just gonna show you that. So here I am at my crock pot and I added boiling water to a bunch of pine needles and uh, used the glycerin the whole bottle of glycerin and then sort of mix that well with some metal tongs. You don't touch this at all with your skin. You use rubber, rubber gloves to sort of deal with it. Um, and I put that on high and sort of weighed that down with a glass lid. Um, you can use metal, metal t as well, just um, or whatever, whatever will weigh it down. Um, so that the pine needles get good coverage. So I kind of gave that a really good um, mix so that it was evenly distributed throughout all the pine needles. And you can see already that the color is just richening in the pine needles where they went from a straw color to this beautiful sort of reddish orangey color all on their own without having to dye them. So I'm really liking it so far so I'm going to put the cover on I'm going to come back and check it in an hour but generally from the videos I've watched you do this for at least three to four hours I'll be back okay hello and welcome back um, it's been oh, a little over four hours I didn't come back and show you uh, mostly because um, I forgot <laughs> so um, Hi, it's Robbie again. So um, I've had those um, pine needles soaking in um, their glycerin bath for um, over four hours. And what they say to do next is to gather out the um, pine needles and give them a really good cleansing in cold water. And uh, you can reuse the glycerin water and, which I will because I have still quite a large batch of pine needles to finish. So I guess you can use that over and over and the color just gets richer and richer in the pine needles, which is really nice. And um, then I'm going to show you how I'm going to use a towel to lay out my pine needles so they can dry properly. So we're not going to have mold developing because we don't want to bundle those pine needles when they're still even a little bit damp. Um, we don't want to have mold developing on, on all our hard work, right? So uh, let me pause this. I'm going to get my rubber gloves on and I'll show you how I'm doing this. Okay, so we're back and I'm going to use my tongs and look at the color of those. Oh, and if you could smell this, yum is <laughs> all I can say. It's very lovely smell. Just, I love the smell of the forest, I guess, but look at that. Right, let's throw that in there and do this one. Just sort of let that all drain. Oh my goodness, you can already tell that they are very pliable now. And I'm gonna show you the difference when I get, get these onto my towel after they've been rinsed. I'm gonna show you the difference in uh, flexibility between these ones that have been treated with glycerin and the ones that have not, that are still waiting their turn in the glycerin bath. There we go. Just a few more. So yeah, I got, these ones are around, I believe seven inches, seven or eight inches. Um, we don't have this far uh, north in Canada. Um, I'm lucky to have found pine needles with this lovely length and this is probably the longest we're going to find maybe a little longer um, maybe eight or nine inches um, but I I read somewhere that the further north you go 
the shorter the pine needles and the further uh, south, the, t the bigger. Okay, so I think we are done. So I'm just gonna give these really good. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside there. Just push that out of the way and just give these a nice, lovely cold bath. And I don't even know how long I should do this. So I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna come back to you when I get it out my towel. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna just turn this so you can see. Wow, right? Look at the color of these. Okay, so here's the ones that I use. I just pick them up, wash them and sort them by size so you can see or length I guess and make little these little bundles with the caps still on these things at the end are called caps I guess and well I'm gonna call it caps this is what they look like and um, I leave them on because sometimes you might want to do um, a basket that shows the ends of these and I've seen them done and they are stunning. So this is the color, the straw color that they are after a wash and dry. And this is the color <laughs> that they are now after being treated in glycerin. Wow, right? So I'm gonna let these ones dry. Probably it's going to take, um, I would say, five days. Um, I'm going to flip those so they're getting continuous um, drying on both sides. And uh, then I'll dry them on a rack when they're not so, you know, damp. And um, then I will maybe show you uh, one of my baskets that I've done uh, with the needles that were not treated so if you look at it here i'll just show you here's one that's the inside and that's where i started to do the lid um, this is just cotton yarn um, you usually use waxed but i don't have that and i don't have wax so um, this is stuff that I knit for my washcloths and they last years and years and years getting wet. So I imagine that this is going to hold up fairly well. So there's the lid and oh yeah, see, <laughs> I've kept the pine cones because uh, in my next basket, I'm going to use this as the lid, right? Good idea. Um, this is the little straw piece that I use, that I insert to, for my gauge. It's just a plastic straw that came with something, I don't know, some kind of drink. And um, these are not very thick and I don't have that many, so I don't wanna do big thick coils. So uh, this serves my purpose quite well. Although I never use the coil, I never use that with making this basket. I, ca I called it free weaving, I guess is where I just kind of gauge myself the thickness that I want and you end up getting this kind of more like, looks like a grass, sewn to get a grass basket. And um, doesn't um, look like the coils that um, you can really see the coils in, in coiled bas bas basketry if you look it up. So this is where I started, my bottom, and then I went out, and I forget what kind of stitch this is called, but it forms like a little V, and on the inside is not so neat and tidy, I would say, so I that's what I make, always make those on the inside, and then I do this V back stitch to kind of just give it a bit more um, protection, I guess, and, and strength but it's also just a decoration method it's also done on the edge of this lid so this is what one of them looks like and the other one i can't show you because my daughter has it 
So um, that's the video for today and the next video I'll have of me actually weaving. Okay, take care. Thanks for watching.